Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Film Snobbery Live. I am your host, the film snob, Nick Baisley. With me tonight, we've got a, a great show for everyone tonight. It's another evening of First Glance Film Month. Um, we've got we've got two great guests for you. Uh, two, uh, we also have two contests for you and a bunch of other stuff to talk about as well. Um, this is the next to last uh, First Glance Film Show. Next, uh, next week will be our last one, and, and then you'll be able to catch us. We'll actually be at the First Glance Film Festival in Philadelphia, running from October 14th through the 17th. Uh, the two guests I have with me today uh, are the two directors. One is uh, John Wakeford Francis, uh, the director of The Creation of Torrid Smoke. And uh, the other one is Jennifer Yi, director of Ten Mountains, Ten Years. Uh, and we're going to be talking with both of them about their productions. Uh, but first, I, want to, uh, I just want to throw out there to everyone, uh, if you're not already um, watching, make sure that uh, you're following us also on uh, twitter.com slash filmsnobbery. Make sure you're also checking us out over at facebook.com slash filmsnobbery. And um, stay tuned because we're also going to be using one or both of those, uh, of those uh, networks for uh, our contests for the evening. Uh, you know, good prizes provided by First Glance Film and also our, uh, our other good sponsors, Movie Maker Magazine. So, fun, fun stuff. Let's get right into it because, again, you know, when you got a lot of guests, we got a lot of show. So let's, let's roll right into it. Our first guest, again, the creation of Torrid Smoke is the movie. The name is, uh, is John Wakeford Francis. We're going to show you the trailer for his film. Uh, in one moment. I apologize again, our director, Ryan Ashan, still at Oktoberfest. I hope he doesn't, you know, have like one of those uh, hostile type of situations where he's, he's uh, you know, hung upside down and over a bathtub and it's just, it could get really uh, gross and disgusting over there. But most likely he's just passed out in a pool of his own vomit. Um, <laughs> gotta love Oktoberfest. But, uh, so yeah, we're going to show you the, the, the trailer for our first guest, John Wicker Francis. The, the name of the movie is Creation of Tort Smoke. You can catch it over at the First Glance Film Festival at, uh, at 3.30 on the Saturday, which I believe is October 14th, 15th, 16th? It's one of those two days. Uh, it's Saturday the 16th. Saturday the 16th. See, he's a uh, guest is right on that. And when we come back, we're going to hear more from our guest, John Wicker Francis. Uh, right after this, stay tuned. Here's the trailer. I wouldn't say I'm a balanced person. I would say I'm a person of extremes. I feel like my painting is my work, my life's work. The sun that I see clearly in my mind because my imagination manifested. So this is like my hit single. Oh, gypsy melody. I want all the different images to have their own scale. That's what will give the smoky scene to the smoke. All that time that's waste, all that's past. I'm at the dregs now, I feel like I'm at the bottom. And I have to pull it back out, this last leg. I can't play music, so I have to make music through pain. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome to the show John Wakeford Francis. Hello, sir. Hey, how's it going? Doing really well. Thank you for coming on the show tonight. We greatly appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here. Uh, well, uh, we're happy to have you. Uh, I'm going to get right into it. Your 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 movie, The Creation of Torrid Smoke, uh, focuses on a, an artist as he creates his painting. How? Where did you first of all find this artist? Who? You know, how did you guys end up getting together? And how did you decide? When did you decide to make a documentary about it? Yeah, um, well, my, my wife and I, we, we first uh, started in D.C., uh, and we worked for about a year, and we wanted to sort of take some time off. So uh, we were in Washington, D.C., and we just we both love the Northwest. So we had the opportunity to uh, help sit for some people in Portland, Oregon. And uh, so we went out there, uh, quit our jobs, basically took a, uh, an extended vacation <laughs> for about uh, seven to eight months. And anyway, so we were in Portland, and through a friend of my wife's friend, I met this, this guy, Blake Dodson, uh, who was the artist that's featured in the film. Uh, and uh, yeah, we just, we hit it off, and we wanted to, I think at first he wanted to make like a kung fu movie. <laughs> and I didn't think that was, you know, I thought it would be funny, but uh, I kind of was looking for something a little bit more serious, I guess. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and so and I went to a show of his, and he, uh, I just really liked his, his work. He was kind of like graffiti influenced, but also really classical uh, at the same time. And um, so yeah, I just kind of fell in love with his work, and he was just about to start a new painting. And I thought, well, I don't really have much to do right now. I'm looking for a project. And, um, and yeah, we started filming them. So the film starts from the very first brush stroke on a blank canvas uh, to to the final final uh, final brush stroke. So now, obviously, obviously these movies, these types of movies, any type of documentary stuff, they kind of jump around a little bit. You know, you insert a little bit of information about the artist. Um, from the first brush stroke to the last brush stroke, what are, what was the actual real time uh, time frame for that? Yeah, it took about four months for him to do that painting, uh, the painting that we filmed. Yeah, and he he's a, he takes a, a while on, on all of his paintings. But yeah, so we I filmed him from uh, the from late February or early March it was until uh, July second. So it was four months solid of uh, of filming. So it, what is your, you know, what what is your background as far as, um, you know, I, we were, for the audience, we were talking a little bit before the show, and actually you're in New York right now uh, doing some work, um, you know, trying to, to brush up on your editing skills a little bit more, um, which mm -hmm. I think education is always awesome. But my question is, yeah. is, is how did you get involved in the industry in the first place, and is that, you know, um, is kind of, you know, this movie, is this more of a calling card type of situation, or is this more of a, um, you know, just trying out new things, seeing it, you know, or is it just kind of like, I really just wanted to film this guy? Yeah, um, I guess my background starts uh, after college. I, you know, I needed a job. I wanted to get uh, involved in video production, but I, I, the college that I went to didn't really have a video production uh, department necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, so the, 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 the most I could do was minor in film studies. But, uh, so anyway, I'm, I, I, through that, I got an internship typing credit uh, for a company in D.C. Mm -hmm. So I uh, started typing credits basically as an intern and then slowly worked up as an editor to uh, like for promos, Discovery Channel, uh, Travel Channel, Nat Geo, uh, PBS, you know, those kinds of things, PLC, that kind of stuff. Because um, Discovery really runs pretty much the majority of video production uh, in D.C. because they're they're centered there in, uh, in, in Silver Spring, Maryland. So anyway, this got started editing promos, really. Um, and uh, yeah, basically after that, I mean, we went to Portland, and I really I just wanted to do something new. I mean, I, and something that was like different than always like, selling something, which is what promos are, and you know how you kind of make money in video production anyway, I guess, but. So I just wanted to do something that wasn't really selling anything, you know, something that was really getting at the heart of uh, just what the creative process, the artistic process was like. And honestly, I just wanted to know um, what it took to make a painting. You know what I mean? Like I, I never really, um, I, you know, I've always, I've never really been a painter, really. You know, I've, I've always been interested in artists and, and friends that were painters, but never really knew what it took what was like behind the scenes of the painting. Uh, and this guy, you know, he's just incredibly detailed about everything that he does. And uh, he'll spend four days creating, like painting a character on his canvas and then decide, you know, two weeks later that he, want, that he doesn't want it there anymore. And so he'll, he'll spend the next, you know, the next week putting, taking that out and then putting something else in. So. Yeah, it, uh, Ethan's was a great opportunity. This this artist Blake Dotson, uh to uh, to just really uncover process of of painting. Now, just like you're what was you know? I mean, you had the subject. You had obviously you had the camera. Um, I'm assuming this was you know, a fairly low budget situation. What were what was the the kind of the the biggest challenge in creating this? Mm, I, the, the biggest challenge was was probably getting every, like filming everything um, that he did. Um, because just he works basically, he works for the most part nine to five uh, every day. And he pretty much, 
uh, when he wasn't, he had, had, had at, at that time had a full time, had a uh, almost like a part time, almost full time job. Um, so like bagging groceries, actually. Uh, mm -hmm. But since has, has been able to quit that job, anyway. <laughs> but uh, so anyway, he was in the studio a lot. And so I guess the hardest part about for me was uh, was filming everything, but also choosing all of that stuff, choosing what to delete, you know, because I, I, I basically, I came like three times a week to film him. And, uh, and other times I would just set up a camera and he would push play when he entered the, or push record when he uh, entered the studio and mm -hmm. started painting. So I, I ended up with about 70 hours, over 70 hours of, of raw footage. Uh, now, what did, end. what did you actually and record on? Was this on like an HDV type of thing, or is this a P2 car? Yeah, or? it was a cheap uh, Canon XL1 back from from 1999. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, you know, you so. say that, but that was my director. I'd mentioned at the top of the show. He's not here. He's in. Um, he's at Oct Oktoberfest in Germany. That's actually the, and actually that, that was his camera. Not only that, that was the camera we shot a lot of early episodes of our show on. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. yeah. Cool. We shot a lot of those on that, and then we moved to um, we stuck with Canon, and we're now uh, we're shooting on one Canon HV40 uh, and a Canon HV30. Nice, very cool. Yeah, the, I mean, those things are great. Those are great cameras. Those HV30 and 40 to there. They they can they just produce a great picture. Oh um, yeah, I'm yeah, I mean, happy. So, and what do you you did you said um, again? We were talking before the show, and you were saying that you had. Um, Started by editing on on an Avid when you were you know doing work right. on Discovery and all that, and then you're you're kind of working your way towards and learning more about um, uh, Final Cut. Did you ed which one did you edit on this? Uh, I used Final Cut for this, yep. Um, which I I really enjoyed. I mean I think the only bad thing we kind of talked about it earlier, but the only bad thing about Final Cut that I've sort of sort of run into is the media management mm -hmm. uh, aspect, and there kind of is no media management. It's all manual. You kind of have to stay on top of it yourself. Right. Um, but I mean it, that that part was pretty easy with this. I think for this video, I mean the, I think the hardest part was just just deleting all of the stuff that that was bad, you know, that I did all the footage that, I mean, if you film 70 hours of stuff, you know, unless you're filming an amazing, like, action adventure, uh, you know, I, you're filming a lot of things that are not compelling, you know, because right. you just, you're filming everything. So, um, yeah, I think that, for me, that was the hardest part, was just weeding through all that 70 hours of footage and, and trying to craft that, the story arc, you know. From from the 70 hours of footage, so. right. And uh, now, and as far as uh, this project, what what do you have? What do you have coming up next? Do you already have another project planned, or is it you know? Yeah. Are, what, what's going it's on? What's, what's coming up next? Yeah, I finished uh, this project um, in April or May of 2010. I finished editing then, and then have, have since been doing the festival circuit uh, with this video. Um, and I've been in uh, Portland, and then I was in Seattle. I played at the Bumper Shoot Festival in Seattle, um, and then I, of course, will be playing in Philadelphia uh, soon. Is this your um, is, is this your first? This, I'm sorry. Is this your first uh, set of experiences in in doing a festival kind of tour with a film? It is. Yeah, this is my first time uh, taking a, a film on the road and, and showing it to people and getting those, those live reactions from from strangers. How do you feel so, about that? <laughs> <laughs> I like it. It's been a really great. I, it's been a beautiful process, really. It really has. I and mean, I feel like there's nothing better than sitting in you know in a, in a theater and like having people laugh at the things that you want them to laugh at or. You know, feel that silence and people. There's a deep moment that's in, in your video, and you, you crafted it that way. You you are hoping that people would sort of buy into your ideas mm -hmm. or sort of story you were trying to tell, or the conflict of the drama. And there's nothing better than having people like react the way that you hoped they would. So, and it's been nice. And, I, and both both of the festivals that I was at in Portland and then in Seattle, um, the artists. Blake was able to come to both of those screenings, mm -hmm. and uh, he was able to do a question-answer session with me after 
screening, which you're already able to talk about and answer questions from the audience. And it was a really, I, I just creatively, like, very rewarding. It's, it's a bit of an expensive thing to do. <laughs> yes, it is. Travel <laughs> to all the different festivals and also just all that stuff. But, um, so I don't know how much I'll do it in the future. Um, so, but, but for this, this first one, it's been a really, it's been a really rewarding yeah, you know, it's 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 interesting that you know you're you're kind of going out and you're doing all the um, the festival stuff now, but you might have somewhat second thoughts on the next one. Um, I, I would think that that would be more so de you know dependent on budget and all that kind of fun stuff. But yeah. is it is it just also? I mean, you're married. You had mentioned. Um, yep. Is it has it taken any strain? You know, has there been any strain there being married and having to go and having to you know this is your job? Yes, so it's kind of what you do. Yeah. Uh, has there been any strain there? Yeah, it is. It is. It's hard to be away, um, even if it's just for two or three days, which is what these festivals tend to be. Um, it does. I mean, it's, I, I do have to travel a little bit for my job, my full-time job, too, mm -hmm. which that plus, plus the film festival it does get to be a, a little bit of a strain, and, and we miss each other. But also, you know, we're, we figure out ways to timeline suspended together and make up for that lost time. <laughs> now, as far as the, uh, as far as the, you know, these festivals are concerned, how many of them have you actually applied to and how many have you actually got into? Like, what's the ratio? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I've applied to about a little, to 10 or 11 of them, mm -hmm. uh, and I've, I've been accepted into three so far. And I'm waiting to hear back. I've been rejected by a few, um, and then I've been except, um, sort of waiting to hear back, I guess, from uh, two or three of them more. So not a bad ratio. I mean, I have 11, 11 festivals, and three of them I've already said yes. So I'm, I'm happy with that. I, and it gets expensive, too. The, the festival submission can be, like, at least you know, 30 bucks, if not, if not, not 70. More. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, what, yeah, what's the, you uh, kind of choose wisely, I guess, which ones <laughs> you submit to. You have chosen wisely. Um, <laughs> yes. So the, the question is, is that you did you um, did you spend any time picking and choosing what festivals that you wanted to apply to? Did you was there any research done uh, beforehand as far as you know uh, you know because I mean how do you pick out Portland and Seattle off the top of your head? You know that I mean obviously yeah. these must have appealed to you somehow uh, first glance. Also, what, what what was the kind of the linchpin in making your decision on these particular on applying to these? particular festivals? Yeah, I, I think the, f the first research uh, tool that I used, and I would just recommend that to any filmmaker that's up there, is uh, withoutabox.com. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's such a great website. It basically lists all of the film festivals that are out there right now. I mean, I, I don't know of any, any of the film festivals that I came across, even whether it's through Without a Box or through, well, even when I was researching, you know, outside of without a box, every single festival said submit your film through without a box. dot com. I don't know if you know what that is, but it's basically a site where you can all the festivals register with this this uh, website, mm -hmm. and uh, you basically enter in all your information on your without a box account for your film, and then you submit you submit it just digitally, basically. So all you have to do is just send the DVD. Yep. Anyway, that's a great database of festivals. Um, and I think a lot of it had to do, like, Portland and uh, Seattle were both two places where I knew people would be interested mm -hmm. in the film because Blake, the artist, is actually from Portland. Mm -hmm. And he lives in Portland. I knew we could get a big audience to the films. Um, and, I, and I just, I don't know, I mean, there's, there's a lot of Portland and Northwest imagery and, and just shots in the film. So I knew it would appeal to that region. Okay. And then Philly, um, Philly, I used to live, I, my wife and I lived in Princeton, New Jersey, like a few months ago, mm -hmm. a month ago. And uh, so we were nearby, and um, so just the proximity of that city uh, compelled me to, and then it's a big city too, you know, uh, so that's always a good thing as well. Okay, well, no, and, and, and uh yeah, you know, that it's it's interesting that you know your experiences and growing up and living around these you know different places or the you know I would say it's definitely in your best interest to to apply to something like Portland where you know the subject of the movie is from there and so like that that's that's uh, definitely a smart way to go. 
Um, yeah, for, without a box, you know, if you're a filmmaker and you don't know about it, I think that that would be more um, surprising than if you, you know, the people who didn't, um, or who do, or one of the other. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It's one of those days. I can't. I can't think anymore. Um, I want, so you you have your your um, your production company, which we can go to at uh, www.feltheart.com. And we can kind of check out the goings on there. What's the um, what? What is the next project? I think I, I think we were going to talk about yeah. that. And I think yeah, I to about that. <laughs> um, well, I just finished a documentary on David Bazan. It's a, a mini documentary. David Bazan is a a musician. Uh, he used to be in a band called Pedro's Alliance. Uh, he's kind of like a he's a, sort of a Christian artist who or he used to be a Christian artist, and he sort of since sort of fallen away from the faith, I guess you could say. Sure. Uh, and um, so the documentary, it's kind of just a mini documentary for fans, basically. Uh, just talking about interviews with him and lots of live footage and behind the stage footage of him, uh, you know, playing the, the, the guitar and talking about um, his tour and his new material and um, sort of his faith now as it stands and sort of the journey of that. Um, and then, so that's finished, and that's up on my website. You can see that uh, at Mm-hmm. That's on there for free. Um, and then the next project right now, the thing that's coming up, is I'm working on a narrative, on a short narrative, um, about a, uh, a guy who uh, actually drinks to a, a law student or a law graduate student who uh, passes the bar and celebrates and in his celebration that accidentally drinks a little bit too much and uh, blacks out and breaks into a McDonald's. Interesting. <laughs> so, yeah, so I'm, and it's kind of like a fluff, so it sounds like a, sort of a, maybe a little bit of a fluff story, but I, I, I think what interests me about that story is the idea of being out of control of your own, uh, you know, a, a seemingly being in control as like a law student who's passing the bar takes a lot of work to do and a lot of discipline. But also at some point there's things that happen to you or you can keep it that are almost out of your control, uh, so to speak. So I just wanted to explore that idea. But it'll be a short film. It'll be about 10 minutes long. And, uh, and hopefully that will be a way to make a longer piece. I sort of have a vision for a, a feature film that, that springs off of that idea. So, uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Excellent. Well, I... I uh I look forward to, to checking out more of that. Again, the, the site is uh, www.feltheart.com. You can also follow our good friend uh, John here over at twitter.com slash feltheartfilm. And uh, he's on Twitter. And uh, I believe your, your, uh, your, the film is on Facebook as well. Um, uh, the, the promo is on Facebook, but uh, unfortunately I can't put the film online yet. Well, not the film, right, the, the trailer, and you have a page for it in the whole nine yards. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yep. yeah. Um, yeah, the film is about, what, 29 minutes long, right, total? Yep, and total 29 minutes. 29 minutes, geez, that must have been out of 70 hours of footage, you said? <laughs> yep, yep, it was a long editing experience. Sounds like it. Sounds like it. Well, I, 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 uh, no, I, I wish you luck, and I look forward to, to seeing you at the First Glance Film Festival this year. And, um, and uh, wow, it's actually, I say this year, it's coming up in like two weeks, huh? Yeah. Jeez, it's, it's, coming up, it's coming up quick. Um, so, yeah, uh, for everyone out there, the creation of Torrid Smoke, uh, I, 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 uh, I'm actually looking forward to, to checking this out. I, I probably will have to find a different way to watch it because I almost never get to actually watch the movies at the film festival because I'm always interviewing people or yeah. work, or working on the edits for the interviews. <laughs> um, right. I edited while I shot last last year, uh, earlier this year, last year. Uh, <laughs> um, so again, yeah, John Wake for Francis. Check him out over again. Uh, Twitter.com slash FeltHeartFilm. Check him out at FeltHeart.com. Check out his uh, this project. Check out his next project as well. Keep up to date with what's going on there. And uh, thank you, thank you again, John, for, for coming on the show. I, I, uh, I appreciate you taking the time and sharing your story with us. It's a lot of pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. It was fun. Thank you. And have a great night. All right. You too. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Bye. So don't you guys go away, though, audience, uh, because we have a contest. And, uh, and as usual, our content is sponsored, sponsored by the First Glance Film Festival and our uh, good friends over at Movie Maker Magazine. That contest will be brought to you by our co-host uh, for the evening. You all know him as the director of Stuck Like Chuck. Hopefully soon you'll know him as the director of other things. 
Uh, but his name is Jerry Cavallaro, and he, I'm going to let him take this contest away like Calgon. Uh, what's up, Jerry? People know me. They do know you, dude. <laughs> they, they know me as, oh, that guy. That guy, totally. Well, yes, we got a nice contest going tonight. Uh, we are actually going to have two contests tonight. Uh, this con first contest is for a one-year subscription to Movie Maker Magazine. Uh, hopefully you've all been paying attention because what you need to do in order to win is to tweet out either the name of our first guest or what film he talked about that we'll be playing at First Glance Film Festival. And you also have to include film snobbery or first uh, and at First Glance Film in the tweet. So just give me either his name or the name of his film. And uh, the first person to tweet out the correct answer will get a one-year subscription to Movie Maker Magazine. Yep, and, so, and I'll be checking on Twitter. Yeah, and w while we're waiting for you guys to go ahead and uh, and get that uh, done, and we'll come back in a moment. I'm going to just uh, go ahead and uh, throw a little promo out there for our good friends at Wirecast. And when we come back, Mr. Jerry Cavallaro will have the um, will have the the winner. So uh, we'll be right back. Wirecast by Telestream is a live production tool that allows everyone to easily broadcast live events and create professional webcasts from any location. All you need is a computer and an internet connection. With features that include live chroma keying, streaming from multiple cameras, and built-in titles, Wirecast has everything out of the box to allow your broadcast to look professional. Try their free Windows or Mac demo now at www.telestream.net. And we're back, everyone. Uh, that was our little promo for our good friends over at Wirecast, brought to you by Telestream. And uh, Jerry, you do we have a winner? Not yet. Not yet. Okay, no problem. We'll do that thing we do called stalling. So if you guys out there haven't uh, haven't tweeted that out yet, do it because one year subscription to Movie Maker Magazine, pretty good deal, especially when you're getting it on the free. Um, we're, uh, we're waiting for our next guest to call in. Her name is Jennifer Yee. She's the director of uh, Ten Mountains, Ten Years. She's going to be coming on soon. She's going to be talking about that movie. I'm actually uh, really excited about that movie in particular because it deals with a couple of topics that are, uh, well, at least one of them is very personal to me. So uh, I'm really looking forward to, uh, to checking that out. Um, while we're waiting, <laughs> while we're waiting, holy crap, Sacred Flash and Jake Stetler are here. I'm very happy to see. I haven't seen. I haven't seen Albert in freaking uh, forever. He's been on set for a while. He's, so welcome back. Welcome back, Albert. Thank you for for tuning in uh, to this special first glance film edition of Film Snobbery over on uh, Sundays, which uh, yeah is ending after next week. But it looks like we might be uh, doing some uh, some more of these in the near future. Uh, wouldn't be fair to first first glance to say who for, but I'm just going to say stay tuned. Um, also, uh, this next, uh, coming up towards the end of the week is, um, uh, next Thursday specifically, this Thursday we have um, our, our next show, uh, the guest for that show is going to be Hunter Weeks, so uh, make sure to tune in Thursdays at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for that as well. Um, so Jerry, do we, have, uh, do we have anything on this end yet? Uh, let's continue stalling. Continue stalling? I don't want to. Yeah, I'm not sure. People don't want free stuff for some reason. Well, I, how many of the pe people have free stuff already? No, the problem is they probably weren't paying attention to the name of that movie that we were that we were just talking about. You know, the movie that was by John Wayford Francis called The Creation of Torrid Smoke. Just, just tweet it, people. Come on, do it. Uh, <laughs> so, um, so people might also be afraid because they they've won recently from us. So. That Maybe we should say that if you won recently from us, you can still win this contest unless you want Movie Maker Magazine. Yeah, in which case that's not going to help you any. But uh, if uh, yeah. I would say if you guys out there um, are, are looking to do, what we can do is uh, what we'll do is we'll just uh, move on because our guest, our next guest is with us, and I'm very excited to have her on the show. Uh, our guest name is Jennifer Yee. She is the director of Ten Mountains, Ten Years, and I'm lo so looking forward to, to speaking with her. So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, when I'm going to show the trailer for, for Ten Mountains, Ten Years, and when we come back, we're going we're gonna to speak with our, our guest and 
uh, I, it's going to be uh, tons of fun times. So uh, everyone stick around, and uh, we'll be right back. We'll be back with our contest winner, hopefully, and we'll also be back with our guest, Jennifer Yee. Stay tuned. is really about the struggle that people who are afflicted with Alzheimer's and Parkinson's go through every day. This story is their trail of hope. Hopefully, we raise enough noise from this film that things will be done. Because we can't afford to wait until tomorrow to find a cure for Alzheimer's disease, for Parkinson's disease. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome our guest here to Film Snobbery Live. I want to welcome Jennifer Yee. Hello. Hi, Nick. How are you doing? I'm doing really well. Thank you for being on the show tonight. Uh, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Oh, no, not a problem. I, I appreciate having you on because I want to talk to you about this, this movie, Ten Mountains, Ten Years. Um, so you, you, you did this uh, is in part to, to bring, was it awareness to Parkinson's and Alzheimer's? Was this a, uh, what, what, what kind of, what was the genesis of this project in particular? Yes, uh, absolutely. It was uh, both to bring awareness and also fundraising uh, for medical research and caregiver programs. We've been blessed to, to work with two amazing uh, charitable foundations, the Lisa Gibbons Memory Foundation, which does uh, free support groups um, in caregiver programs for both Alzheimer's and Parkinson's through the United States, and the Focus on a Cure Foundation for Parkinson's, which does amazing programs for, uh, for Parkinson's disease all across the U.S. as well. Now, what, what was the, the um, you know, why, I guess I would say, why Parkinson's and Alzheimer's? It seems like a, an interesting combination. Why not, you know, breast cancer and AIDS or, can, you know, something like that? Like, right. what was, why those particular foundations and those particular ailments? I had met a, a gentleman by the name of Enzo Simone, who um, is the, the star of the film, and uh, he was creating this project three years ago. His mother was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease and his father-in-law was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease and uh, he's been a, a mountain climber for a long time and he decided to use his passion of mountain climbing to bring positive change and awareness for both of these causes so he combined them into the, the epic project and uh, that's how the film evolved around it. And, and I appreciate you kind of um, talking about the whole Alzheimer's thing. I had a, a grandfather who, um, it was, uh, for me, it was a real, per it was very personal because the guy, uh, he was a rocket scientist for NASA. Uh -huh. and I really, really um, smart guy. He was the guy who basically uh, helped uh, really turned my appreciation of movies, you know, into, you know, what it is now, and, and also he was the person who first showed me how to use a computer, person who, you know, taught me how to drive a car, he was the guy who taught me how to shoot pool, and, and taught me about music, and all this other kind of stuff, and so um, I never found out that he had Alzheimer's until I, it was years later, we had just kind of fallen out of touch, but I'd gotten engaged. And I went to go uh, visit him to introduce him to my new fiance. <clears throat> and he seemed normal enough, and we were talking, and then he asked me, how's your mother doing? Oh, you know, she's doing good, she's whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, we would go on having the conversation, and then he would say, oh, okay, yeah, that's, you know, that's good, blah, blah, blah. You know, he'd answer the questions as, you know, any other person would, and then he'd be like, so how's your mother? 
And it didn't click for me until like the third or fourth time he asked that something wasn't right. And yeah. then, uh, yeah, I went to follow up uh, a couple, you know, another year later, and, and I went to his house, and he didn't recognize me. He thought I was his other son, and who was much older than me, and um, married, and like, you know, you would think he would know. It was just, it was just an, an interesting kind of, it, it's, it's, it's a very um, emotional disease because it's debilitative, and, and not only to the person who's going through it, but to the people who have relationships with the people around people who have Alzheimer's. Uh, because you know those relationships that you've formed over years are just gone. Yeah, you know it, it, it breaks my heart to to hear um, you know what you had gone through and, and what so many people go through. And, and one of the things that I've seen in making this film is you have no idea how many people um, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's affects, and it, it it can affect anybody. It can you know you can be rich and famous, or you know you can be a regular person. You can any culture, ethnicity, race, you know, anywhere in the world, um, nobody is immune to it and, um, you know, it can affect your loved ones and your best friends and your husbands and wives and um, it's, it's absolutely heartbreaking and, you, and you're absolutely right that it, it's not just um, a disease for the person going through it, but it, it affects everybody around them and, uh, you know, we, we call our Alzheimer's and Parkinson's both the, the caregiver's disease in a sense because um, everybody caring for their loved ones, uh, you know, they're in a sense all going through it together. No, I, yeah, I, and it's, it's, it's really a, um, I, I, again, it's one of the, you know, the Michael J. Fox campaigns on Parkinson's a lot, you know, and, and you hear about Alzheimer's, um, you used to hear about it a lot more, you don't hear about it as much now. It's nice to see kind of a movie that uh, kind of is an advocate of both. And in, in doing so, I mean, you've got some great people to help you on this. Um, I saw, you know, in the trailer, obviously, Lisa Gibbons. Uh, lends a, a little bit of a hand there, Anne Hathaway, which I was really surprised, um, not because I dislike her in any way, as a matter of fact, she's one of my favorite actresses, uh, or you know, newer actresses that have come out there, um, you know, for, for years I've, I've enjoyed her work. Um, how did you bring both of those people onto this project? You know, it's interesting, um, when we started this, this whole journey, we really, uh, it was very much an underdog story, and we had all the odds stacked against us, and uh, we just wanted to do a good thing, and, and we just wanted to tell a story that could reach people, and we reached out to a lot of families um, all over the country that are affected by Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, and um, we never asked for anything in return, and, um, you know, we just wanted to do good, and uh, in in the way that, you know, the, the good way the world works, um, a, a lot of those families ended up having a uh, connections that, that really ended up coming around to help us and, and they lent so many helping hands and, and generous hands to help make this movie possible and a lot of it was bringing in the right people as far as the cast and the crew. Um, so we've been, we've been very, very blessed with, uh, with generous people in that respect, um, especially with all the celebrities involved and, um, you know, it's, it's just one of those things that uh, you never really know where something's going to end up, but you just do the right thing and, and it'll come together for you. And I, I'm, I'm disappointed because it looks like I've missed you twice now. I've missed this movie twice. You guys were at the Boston, <laughs> you guys were at the Boston Film Festival, which is, I'm in Massachusetts. We're based in Massachusetts, for crying out loud. <laughs> and I missed you there. And then um, I missed you at, were you at, was it Staten Island? No, we haven't, uh, we haven't played in New York yet, but um, yeah, Boston was fantastic. We actually uh, we played there last week, and we won the documentary at the Boston Film Festival. It was, that was a fantastic one. It was Connecticut, right? Yes, Connecticut, Connecticut. was fantastic and I, as well. And I was there this year, and I just that was one of the few movies I didn't end up getting to see. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. And you weren't there either, apparently, because I was doing interviews with everybody. Oh, I was there. I don't know. We must have we must have missed each other. But uh, yeah, we had a fantastic time in Connecticut at the the Palace Theater in Danbury. Mm -hmm. um, they were wonderful to us, and um, we were fortunate to to win Best Documentary in Connecticut as well. So we were very fortunate at, at all the festivals we screened at. And, and I can see why. I mean, something like this is a. Uh, um is definitely, I mean, it, I know it would probably sound very crass to say, but it's, it's a good festival movie um, in as much as, as, you know, when you're, you take uh, subjects like this and, and you're, you're putting it in front of audiences like, the, like in a festival uh, of crowd, which is usually made up of business people and people within the town, it, but the key word there is people. 
and, and those people are in a position to, to vote on these things that might, especially uh, for afflictions like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's, they might be very close to their hearts and their families. So right. you know, it, you know, when you're when you're in a competitive uh, environment like that, where the people are voting on their these these uh, particular movies, uh, generally you see movies like yours come out on top, and I'm happy to see that. I really am. I think that movies like Ten Mountains, Ten Years really could use uh, as much uh, exposure as it possibly can. Um, what now? Uh, Ten Mountains, Ten Years seems to me to be like a, a movie that would. Especially given where you're going with it, and you know mountains, um, you would think that that would get very costly, expensive, and, and dangerous in some regards. Uh, what, what, how did you kind of keep all of that under control? The, that was an enormous challenge. If I ever figure that out someday, I'll let you know. <laughs> but um, yeah, you know, it's a, it, it's the delicate balancing act that I think every filmmaker has to uh, has to deal with, and you know, we're kind of all in the in the same boat, jacking everything around together and it's pretty entertaining at times but um you know it was, it was a group of friends um and we really we called in a lot of favors and um we kind of bound together and and you you get creative about how to do things on a very small budget and uh you, you gotta um juggle a lot of things around with you know we we shot uh, this film was shot partly in los angeles chicago new york Tanzania, Kenya, Africa, we flew through Europe, um, there's a lot of travel expenses and a lot of permit expenses filming in different countries and, um, you know, dealing with language barriers and, and just a whole bunch of challenges, but, um, you know, you're going to see that on every film production, um, so it was, uh, it was a really wonderful learning experience and uh, a lot of people came together, so, you know, it's a... Uh, it, it was a good challenge for us to have. <laughs> well, what was your what was your experience in in film uh, before this movie? Uh, I worked in development uh, at um, a couple of the studios, and I did um, uh, script development on features. So I, it, that was a, an excellent learning experience in Los Angeles to see the whole development process of how films are made and everything that needs to happen to to bring a film from the script to the screen. Um, so before going independent, I was fortunate enough to, to learn the ropes uh, around a lot of that and then uh, take all that experience and, and then, um, you know, I, I think it helps a lot so you don't go out there thinking that it's going to be easy and you know that there are going to be a thousand steps along the way and a lot of barriers um, trying to maybe prevent you from, from getting there, but uh, it's, it's definitely worth the ride. In, in terms of going independent, as you kind of said, um, you know, you had these these experiences and these connections at these various studios and in other industries areas that you you know were a part of um, what you know would, would it would it have been as is uh, would it have been the same movie if you had done kind of a script treatment ish type of situation I know it's a documentary so that's kind of loose but if you had done a treatment so to speak and then tried to shop it around and maybe tried to get more money for it that way um, would this have been a different story if you didn't go independent with it yeah, yeah that's an interesting thought I, I think it, it probably would have evolved into something much different as far as having to go through the different levels of studio approval, one of the reasons I, I chose to go independent with it um, was because, you know, it is such a, a personal film dealing with, uh, you know, very personal matters of, of different uh, families and whatnot, and we wanted to make sure that we were able to tell it in the exact way we wanted to tell it, and we didn't so much want to have to compromise the creativity on this one, whereas in other films, I might be more apt to, to compromise uh, a lot of the, the creative avenues of it, but since this one was so personal, we wanted to make sure it was done a certain way, and we wanted to have that. So, um, uh, you know, I'm glad we went the independent route, although uh, there's pros and cons to the studio route and, and the independent route. It's just, um, you know, sometimes when it's close to the heart, it's better to keep your hands on, on all of it. And, and because this is such a personal story, especially to the families that you were, were dealing with, um, did you ever encounter any any issues of for of, of access to any information that you were looking to get, and and well, were, or were the families very understanding, and very open about you know the purpose of this movie? You know, what did it was it hard to get these people involved? No, fortunately, everybody that got involved was was absolutely wonderful and trusting, and I, you know I, I hold it in, in very very high honor when any time somebody gets involved with one of my projects my trust and, and faith and responsibility to them is the priority and we 
become friends along the way, so they knew that they were in good hands, and I knew that I was in good hands working with them. And as an example, that we had uh, one of the main characters we feature in the film is um, a gentleman named Ken Golenke who lives in Chicago, and uh, we followed him through deep brain stimulation surgery um, for Parkinson's disease, and he was able to get us full access to uh, inside the surgery at Rush University Medical Center in Chicago, and uh, the, the medical staff was absolutely fantastic, and Ken's family was fantastic. And you know, one of the important things I think all documentary filmmakers experience is that when you're telling somebody's story, it's as much a responsibility um, and a privilege as it is in, in the creative process because you want to make them proud and you want to make sure that you, you do justice to their story and you tell it the way they would want it to be told. So we were very, um, very open to keeping all the cast members into the production process and keeping them posted and in the loop on everything. And I think that was very important. Uh, that was a very important part of the process. And, and as far as what, you know, this film is concerned, um, you know, you're taking it around different film festivals, obviously, like you know, we said we've missed each other at a couple, apparently. Um, uh, you know, have you, do you have a plan for what happens with this film after the film festival uh, kind of set and you have an, another kind of marketing strategy or another uh, outlet for this film to, to, be, um, to, to be distributed in? We're looking to tour the film festival circuit uh, until the spring of 2011 and then looking to sign with a television network. So television is our ultimate goal and uh, we're you know, we're really enjoying the, the festival circuit and visiting each of the cities and each city where we screen for a festival. We've been visiting with families in, in each uh, town and support groups for Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and uh, hospitals and, you know, in, in home hospice care centers. So it's, uh, it's been wonderful to meet people along the way. And um, we've been able to, to build um, an incredible following of people that are, um, both directly connected and indirectly connected, and network, networking with a, you know a, a lot of wonderful people along the way. So I think we're going to all be a little bit sad when the festival tour ends, but it'll be <laughs> opening a, a good new chapter, and, and hopefully that'll be television. And and uh, oh, I had a question, and it just literally entered my brain and then <laughs> exited stage left. Um, <laughs> So uh, as far as as far as Ten Mountains Ten Years, you want to get it over on television. Your your plan your your plan is to go to the to, you know around the springtime of, of 2011. Um, you know you're as you're you're going and you're making the decisions on where to play this this uh, this film. Um, what what influences your decision as to what film festival you're going to uh, apply to? We've been trying to hit the the mainstream audiences. We've been uh, trying to hit a lot of the major festivals and we're also trying to hit the cities and the towns where, where we have, uh, where we know we have established fan bases. So um, most of the major cities we, we wanted to hit Boston, we'd love to hit Florida, we definitely wanna, wanted to hit, we're very excited to hit Philadelphia. Philadelphia is actually my hometown so I'm, I'm very excited to, to come back home for that one. We wanted to hit Los Angeles, we screened in Los Angeles in August and won the Audience Award for Best Feature Film, that was a very exciting one. And we want to. We definitely want to hit Chicago and uh, Texas. So we want to blanket the U.S. And uh, we also want to screen in, in uh, Canada and Europe. And you know, there's there's a wonderful array of festivals out there. You don't realize how many are out there until you start um, navigating through it. And uh, you know, there, there's there's more than uh, than people realize. Oh yeah, no thousands, literally. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and, and no, and, and for those of you guys out there that want to follow this movie a little bit more, you can you can definitely uh, fan it or like it on Facebook, uh, facebookcom slash Ten Mountains Movie. Um, you can also check out the uh, production company. It's BacklightProductions.com. Yes, absolutely. Yep. Go to uh, www.BacklightProductions.com. And uh, and is, uh, Jennifer, I, I want to th uh, thank you uh, for for coming on. You so you are going to be um, you are going to be at the Philadelphia one. Yes, I will be, and, and we're very excited. We have um, a huge crowd coming, and, and we're hoping to sell at the theater, and uh, hopefully everybody will, will come to us at the, the first glance of Philadelphia Film Festival at the Franklin Institute. It's, it's going to be a fantastic show. I want to thank everybody at the festival, and I want to thank you, Nick, for, for having us. You know, it's, it's, 
it shows in, in people like you that are, are the lifeblood of this film and um, helping us get exposure and publicity. Really, really appreciate it. No, I, I want to thank you for, for taking the time out as well. Not only, uh, I, I've said this before and I do actually mean it. Um, you make the movies without you making these movies. I don't have a job. <laughs> so, um, so I no, I appreciate it, and, and and you know, if you're not out there talking about this, and you know, uh, and and I'm happy to provide the outlet for you to do that. I mean, if you're not talking about it, you know, not, people aren't going to be made aware uh, more so of of great stories uh, involving these people that you know have Parkinson's or Alzheimer's, and you know, you know the movies like this will, you know, I, you hope they don't, but. Sometimes they slip through the cracks, and anything that we can do to, to help to help that out, that's what we're here for. And and I'm happy that you say you're going to be at the First Glance Philly uh, uh, Festival because I will be there as well, and I'll finally get to do an actual <laughs> interview with you uh, that that is in person. Uh, I look I look forward to that. We'll, we'll make sure we catch each other. Uh, thank you, and I want to thank you again, uh, everyone. Are you on? Are you guys on Twitter as well, or just Facebook? Uh, yeah, just Facebook. We've been focusing on uh, Facebook.com slash Ten Mountains Movie. There's uh, we we post weekly updates every every week to, to tell people which city we're in and the upcoming screenings and how they can catch us and um, where the casting crew will be so they can come meet us and talk to us. And, and no, no, and, and uh, thank you. Uh, I was just sitting here. Uh, let's see. Hold on. We have a, a just a, a quick uh, thing in the in the the chat room here. Uh, Mojave 44, our good friend Michelle says, as one of the millions of caregivers and a daughter who has slash is watching uh, PD steal my father's vibrance and independence, just want to say thank you to Jen and crew for helping share their stories of many. Wow. So that was that was really that was really uh, that yeah. So there you go. I mean it it is way more common than I think a lot of people think, and um, and uh, it, it's 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 you know it it's good that you know people are talking about it. That, you know, the stuff like that, when, when I hear people, um, when people come up to us at screenings and when people write letters to us and tell us how it's affected them and, and, and how Parkinson's and Alzheimer's have affected their families, that right there is why we do it for people um, exactly like that. And, and if we can reach out and touch one life, that makes it all worth it. And um, so, I, you know, it, it just it touches me that, uh, that we're able to do that. And, and uh, I want to thank you again for, for taking the time to, to come on and chat with us. I, I, I uh, look forward to, to seeing Ten Mountains Ten Years, hopefully uh, hopefully at the First Glance Philadelphia Film Festival. If for some reason I can't see it there because I'm doing the whole interview thing and everything, hopefully I'll catch it on, on TV or on DVD. Excellent. So, thank you so much, Nick. Thank you, Jennifer. I appreciate you coming on the show. Appreciate it. Take care, guys. Take care. Uh, so that was Jennifer Yee, everyone. Ten Mountains, Ten Years. Uh, again, check it out, facebook.com slash Ten Mountains Movie. Also go to uh, www.backlightproductions.com. Check out the rest of the stuff that they're, Jen, and, Jen and co. are working on. Um, really excited. Uh, we did get a winner for our uh, for our uh, our last contest, and we have one more contest we're going to talk about. Jerry, what was the, what was the contest? Uh, who was the winner? Uh, at Shiny Grape won uh, the last contest. So congratulations. I don't think she's in the chat room or I didn't well, see her. Well, she is chat. now. I see her in here now. But yeah, she but she just like snuck in. That was like a uh, that was like a, a stealth tweet. Yeah. Well, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's actually very funny. I um I was looking at the profile pic and I was like I know her from somewhere and she's the creator and and she worked on a uh, Wiccan Chicken which uh, is a show that I think she's trying to get made, and I used a clip from it in a, in a documentary in my freshman year of college. Oh. Because so, she had the Jersey Devil as a character, and I did a documentary on the Jersey Devil, and she did a little interview, too, and she sent me the interview, so thank you, and uh, this is, it's funny how this all worked out. <laughs> it kind of does. Um, I'm, I'm glad. Th uh, congratulations, Shiny Grape, for, for winning. And um, but we do have one more quick contest we're going to do before we get out of here. So uh, let's let's uh, Jerry. Why don't you go ahead and, and uh, you do that one as well? Sure. Uh, the contest is going to be very similar to the first one. Just be the first person to tweet out who our second guest of the show was. Just uh, either uh, tweet out her name or tweet out the project name, the, the name of the film that she talked about. And be the first person to tweet out, and you get a one-year Movie Maker Magazine subscription. 
So, yeah, I'll be checking out on Twitter, be the first person to tweet out, and you'll win. Yay! And remember, if you win uh, tonight, you're eligible, and if you won any other previous night, you're eligible for the big prize, which we're announcing next week on the next show, the next Sunday, at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here at live.filmsnobbery.com. How do you like how I work that in, huh? Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so what we're going to do is, while we're giving you guys a chance to, to tweet that out and win your prize, what we're going to do is we're going to go, we're going to uh, play just another quick plug from our good friends over at Final Draft. And when we come back, we've got a couple other things that we want to talk about, and then we're out of here. So uh, we'll be right back with our winner and some uh, a little bit more discussion. So talk to you in a moment. Final Draft version 8 is the industry standard for screenwriting software with ease of use and time-saving features like Final Draft Scene View, Index Cards, and Scene Properties Inspector. You can see why Final Draft users include Academy Award winners like Oliver Stone, Tom Hanks, J.J. Abrams, and James Cameron. Final Draft is now even more extensible with its new XML-based file format that can be used to import your script into many other programs. Check out Final Draft 8 now for free over at www.finaldraft.com. Hey, okay, everyone, we're back. Um, if you're not already following us over at uh, Twitter, please do, twitter.com slash filmsnobbery. Also, if you're not following uh, First Glance Film Festival yet, follow them over at twitter.com slash firstglancefilm. Um, Jerry, do we have a winner yet, or is this one of those deals where we're going to uh, continue to uh, stall for a moment? We'll find out in one second. I just refreshed the page, so let's hope <coughs> someone tweeted out. Let's see. It appears that Jake Stetler is the winner. Jake Stetler? So, yes. All right. I'll Congratulations, Jake. <clears throat> Congratulations, Jake. We'll get you your Movie Maker <laughs> subscription probably before and you'll I... also get him his copy of Stuck Like Chuck. <laughs> I was just going to say, he'll probably get his copy of Stuck Like Chuck after the Movie Maker subscription. I swear to God I'm going to send it to you, dude. I just, I literally have not had the money for postage. <laughs> That's really been like the only stopping point here is I haven't had the money for the postage. But uh, I'll tell you what, if you folks out there are nice enough to contribute by uh, buying a new Film Snobbery t-shirt that we just launched, uh, the pre-orders are open now. Uh, you go to filmsnobbery.com slash store, and you can pick from either men's and women's designs. You can also uh, pick black or white. Uh, it designs it's uh, it's good stuff. We're available in all sizes, and while we're in the pre-order phase, uh, it is free shipping anywhere in the world. So no excuse. Even if you live in Hong Kong, you should be buying a film snobbery shirt because it says film snobbery and it says B and D, and it's cute and awesome. So you guys should totally uh, purchase those men's and women's styles. So no excuses. Um, it's awesome. It, 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 it's a nice looking shirt, isn't it, Jerry? It's a nice looking shirt. Hello. It is. And, and like I said in the chat room during the last show, oh, it's a lot better than the one that was just a picture of your face. Yes, Jerry. Yes. Much better than that. What? Um, but uh, I want to thank everyone. Uh, that one is just been a Gucci shirt, though. <laughs> Really, Jerry? Really? That's 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 the direction after today's show. That's the direction we're taking it. <coughs> we needed we tissues. We went way too heartfelt. And we, it was we actually needed. a very sweet show, and we had it, we, you opened up, and I just had to bring it back to where we usually are, because then we might have scared away our diehard fans. <laughs> <laughs> Nice, nice. Um, so yeah, and uh, again, if you're, uh, we already talked about Twitter, but if you're not following us on Facebook, please do so as well. Facebook.com slash Film Snobbery. Occasionally we'll be throwing out, especially now that we're having some merchandise. We're going to be adding new merchandise as things go on. Um, and be sure to catch our seminars, which we'll be launching again soon. We have two seminars that are in development right now that we'll be launching shortly. Uh, we may be throwing some discounts for said shirts and said uh, 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 seminars. Uh, on our Facebook page, and that might be the only way you can get it, so uh, be sure to, to like our page there. That's uh, facebook.com slash film snobbery. Uh, make sure you do that as well. Uh, if you're not already checking out our good friends over at the First Glance Film Festival, I, I don't know why you're not, because you should be. First Glance, Fe uh, First Glance Film Festival Philadelphia, 
this uh, this this um, October uh, 14th through the 17th at the Franklin Institute down in Philadelphia. Uh, you can go check them out over at uh, www.firstglancefilms plural dot com. Um, you can also go and check out their channel on openfilm.com too. They've got all the trailers and the clips and stuff like that. I think even my interviews from Hollywood uh, back in April are on there too. Uh, we're going to personally be there at the First Glance Film Festival, as you might have heard me state uh, elsewhere in the show. We're going to be there, and uh, by we I mean at least me, um, doing the, some interviews there on the red carpet. Uh, so we've got lots more stuff that we're going to talk about with you guys out there. Uh, I want to thank our guests for the evening. I want to thank uh, John Wakeford Francis. I also want to thank Jennifer Yee. Please check out their films. Uh, again, The Creation of Torrid Smoke and Ten Mountains, Ten Years. Uh, we will see you this Thursday at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time over at live.filmsnobbery.com with our guest, Hunter Weeks, uh, the uh, director of Ride the Divide, sponsored by Liv Strong. You know, Lance Armstrong, you know. That guy. So we want to talk. We want to talk to Hunter about that experience because that's another one of those great, uh, great films out there that that you know really uh, is more about the message of the film. So I, I really uh, can get behind that. Um, Jerry, do we have any type of? Uh, we have the winner for our last contest, Jake Stetler. Congratulations, Shiny Grape. Congratulations as well. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of our first glance a film festival show for tonight. Uh, stick around next Sunday where we'll bring you two more interviews and a lot more prizes and a lot more uh, self-shameless promotion. So, <laughs> good night, everybody.